scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. This was a testimony in the heavens that we the redeemed have not only been saved and delivered but that we have been made unto our God kings and priests some versions say a kingdom of priests please listen and it says and we shall reign on the earth we have been made a kingdom of kings and of priests and we shall reign on the earth these two dimensions that the bible reveals is very critical for kingdom advance in any territory the revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the bible says we have been made both kings and priests and that the system of our legislature must be such that it is covered within the scope of our kingship and priesthood. That means that if we find ourselves living as kings alone, there is a dimension of God and kingdom advance that cannot be effectively dispensed. And if we ignore that dimension as kings and focus on our priesthood alone, as important as that is, we will still rob God from finding expression within a territory. Very important teaching tonight. The first thing I want you to know tonight is that kingdom advancement is territorial. It's an information that I do not want us to be, take lightly and to be careless over. Kingdom advancement, although the mandate is global, God's system of advancement is territorial everybody say kingdom advancement is territorial this for me is already a big deliverance for men of God because sometimes in a bid to take over the world are we together now we do not understand that the system of kingdom advance is the progression of God's purposes across territories are we together from one territory to the other 
God's idea of globalizing the earth with his presence and ideology is not just jumping from place to place. It's not just building branches, but being able to establish practically the life, the character, the nature of the kingdom across a territory. So God's rating for a believer, for a man of God, for a church, although your, the scope of your mandate may be global, but you are rated based on your efficiency across the territory you have been planted per time. Are we together now? That means that if God has planted Koinonia in Zaria in this time and in this season, no matter how effective our teachings, the external ministrations are across the nations of the earth, that is not going to be the parameter for God's rating. Primarily, he is going to judge us based on the efficiency how we have taken advantage of his presence the intelligence he has supplied alongside the grace that has come by the supply of the spirit how we have been able to establish his purposes across this territory so that's the first point i want you to understand tonight that this king priest dimension the system of legislature is highly territorial we live in a time where there is such appetite for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that we love expanding it's a proof of growth but sometimes we can be carried away in the euphoria of the, the sociological effect of expansion and miss out on territorial impact where we are unable to to live out the fullness of god's expectation as a portion to a territory it was jesus that taught us in matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 matthew 5 14 to 16 this is what jesus said he was teaching and he said ye are the light of the world now when you read and try to understand what jesus is saying just with head knowledge it can be very deceptive because you see the speakings of god is such that he speaks to men when he's speaking to one man he speaks to the nation in him are you getting the point now i told you that when god speaks to us we must learn the character of god's communication i've taught it here again and again in koinonia that number one when god speaks to you he never speaks as though he's speaking to a man the first thing we need to understand about the speakings of God I'm just digressing to help us understand God never speaks to men as though he's talking to men he speaks to men as though he's talking to himself number one number two God's communications are prophetic the relevance of his words always transcend the individual who is hearing it the individual hearing that word is only a representation of all those who will be benefactors of that word God never speaks to a man and then limits the blessing of that word to that individual alone he sent a word to Jacob and then that word lighted upon Israel God always speaks to nations in men are we learning now so every time God speaks to you sometimes you see that the word is heavy because he's speaking in nations through you and if we do not understand the speakings of God, we will carry mandates that were not part of his scope of dealing with us, thinking because you had it. God can speak to me, for instance, and say the vision he has given this ministry is replicating the fullness of God's life across the earth. And I can walk in the deception believing that it simply means that I will pioneer the move of God in every nation. No, when God was speaking, he was speaking to you in me. Are we together now it is through that prophecy that mandate comes to pass now if you do not understand this dimension of God's speakings you will end up in error his rating for men is global prophetically but experientially he deals with men territorially learn this the church in Pagamos the church in Smyrna the church in philadelphia not the church in the world when the spirit of god began to speak in revelations from where we would get some of these things he says right the communication was to the whole world but he broke it down 
to several churches he would come to this church and commend them i have weighed you i have seen what you have done across that territory a and b and c is what you have done in alignment to my purposes d and e you are in defiance to my precepts here's my advice correct yourself otherwise because of your disalignment you and that territory will suffer certain things his system of marking was territorial it was never generic he did not generalize his probing he went to the churches one by one the church in pagamos the church in philadelphia the church in smyrna the church in um you know ephesus and so on and so forth kingdom advance is territorial it is true that we are the light of the world it is true that we are a city that is set on a hill but then we must understand that this king priest dimension is such that god places men in territories when god wants to promote men he promotes men by supplying three things number one a greater dimension of illumination I'm, I'm touching on many things now the first way god promotes men is by opening them to deeper access understanding the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom the moment the portals of the heavens the portals of revelation are open to you higher and greater than that which you have seen and known then it's a sign of promotion in the spirit number two grace that anointing that agency capacity in the spirit is multiplied unto you and then number three there is an increase and a portioning of greater physical territories not just spirit, spiritual territories alone god lifts men by increasing the span and the influence of their territory Are we together? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Very popular scripture. Jesus was teaching. Having resurrected, he was having his last session with the disciples who would now be apostles before he would leave. And then they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? And he replied by saying, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put in his care. Then verse 8 says, but ye shall receive power. Listen carefully. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be not men of God, witnesses, witnesses unto me. Then he begins to apportion territories. He would have said you will be witnesses unto me all over the world, full stop. But now he's teaching them because shortly he would be leaving. And they would be the ones to start and he's telling them look 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 the goal is the utmost part of the earth but it will be broken into territories first jerusalem then judea then samaria and then it will expand to the utmost part of the earth the first crusade that happened after christ resurrected the bible says that something happened on the day of pentecost now peter was preaching and when peter began to preach in chapter 2 of acts the bible says that the men were caught to the heart listen carefully and then they said men and brethren what shall we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise this is the part i'm going to he said for this promise is for you are you saying now for your children oh dear look at this little boy for you for your children for your children's children then he now says as many as are far off even those that the lord will call sometimes you you, you think that the, the bible is too detailed why would god he would have just said this promise is for everyone after all joel already told us he said i shall pour out my spirit on all flesh so why tell us again it is to you your children children's children and to those who are far off as many as the lord will call god's dealings is territorial that means a true believer's assignment is to look at the whole world but to focus on the territory you have been apportioned that is where your ranking that is where your marking that is what authorizes you to be apportioned new spheres both in the spirit and physically our obsession for more our obsession for increase sometimes robs us from the capacity to be faithful
write this down our mandate as matured believers is to keep the ordinances of God alive across our apportioned territories our mandate in terms of territorial impact is to be preservers of the ordinances of God to ensure that every territory has a representation of the presence the power the system the glory of God in that territory if we fail to carry this out then we have failed woefully listen again that our mandate as matured believers with respect to kingdom advance is not just to be preachers not just to be prosperous that's important not just to build churches and ministries but that we become custodians and preservers of the ordinances of God within the territory that has been apportioned to us that means there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Zaria listen carefully there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Nigeria there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Jos in Kogi state and those who are mandated to be preservers of those ordinances are believers not just those who advance and win souls but we are like spiritual librarians mandated to make sure that there is a system that preserves the ordinances of God this in my opinion is one of the biggest mistakes of the Western Church they, they, they lost a part of their assignment they were obsessed with expansion and they forgot that they were mandated so there was a generation that lost touch with another generation and everybody now is guessing his opinion there is a curriculum of a God that has been apportioned to that territory and it was within the power of all the men of God within that dispensation to walk with the Holy Spirit and to preserve that truth when a dimension of God apportioned to a territory is lost they cannot hold certain dimensions of him the church in Nigeria is a wonderful place you know that I love the church I love the body of Christ but I think that we have to trust God in this time and in this season to our idea of kingdom advance is in many ways faulty and we must trust God together as a united body to correct ourselves because there is this obsession for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that but it looks to me like our concept of kingdom advance is establishing our presence is in as many territories as possible whilst there is a dimension of that we are largely missing it because the idea is not just to establish our presence as the man of God or the denomination our idea is to make sure that in every territory there are men who represent portals for kingdom advance that there be no territory that is barren of a true apostolic and prophetic community that represents the individuals who can host God to his expectation within a territory. If we fail to do that, we have missed a lot. If you're understanding me, say amen. One of my greatest fear in life is finding out that I did not live my life and I did not do ministry to God's expectation. It is a very tragic state because the Bible says that our works will be tried with fire. Are we together now? Yes. Tonight, tonight is, is, is more, it's more like a minister's conference. It's a challenge to believers and everybody, but the challenge is, is for those who have been trusted with some measure of spiritual influence over people, groups, 
territories we must trust God for understanding on how kingdom advance happens there is too much guessing in the body of Christ and everybody believes he is right but our results are showing that there is inefficiency there is inefficiency somewhere there are activities going on there are programs going on conferences going on and nothing is wrong with those things in themselves except that the heart of God's intent is seldom being communicated and that calls for a very serious review of our approach to kingdom advance it is God's desire John chapter um, 15 now and verse 8 that we bear fruit and that our fruit abides meaning your fruit can be lost are we together we have lost several foundational precepts as simple as how to know who is saved and who is not is a serious problem for believers that's a sign that something is wrong with the church that we have lost that ability to be able to see the clarity on who is lost and who is saved the average believer does not know what to do with a new convert is that true the moment you bring a new convert to a believer and say please um, I'm trusting you with the destiny of this brother or this sister you will be shocked to find out that that person may even be a pastor in church that that person may even be a deacon that person may be a worker a leader having been around the things of God for many years sitting down under spiritual leaders but not knowing what to do you say well I don't know what to do with this person what is step B after giving your life to Christ how do ordinary believers become spiritual men do we know well enough to be committed to someone that you can give someone who just got born again and they trust him and say look in three weeks we should be able to see certain things happen in this life listen let me tell you the truth if we do not re-examine this I truly believe that a few years from now the lapse of our being out of touch with these spiritual realities will become clear with all humility and with all love for the body of Christ look at the caliber of we pastors and men of God that are handling the pulpit we are largely ignorant people ignorant of the precepts of God ignorance of the methodology of God we just went through a denominations foundation school or a denomination school of ministry or a denominations requirement for ordination and all of a sudden oil is poured upon you and you are granted access to the souls of hundreds thousands and millions of people who submit their minds and their spirits to the mentorship of a confused person who only had the privilege to hold a mic and we keep teaching them and they swallow everything we teach hook line and sinker the life of the church today is a testament of our inefficiency as men of God the average believer does not have an understanding of kingdom advance at all we don't know we don't care we are not even interested what do you do do you know that's why look at the body of Christ the gap between extremely anointed people and those who are squallowing around the ground is too wide what happened are you getting what I'm saying in a whole territory you may find just two or three people at the upper levels spiritually and then that's all right but the next set of people will be so far apart I have seen churches where in a whole church only maybe two or three of the spiritual leaders are truly anointed or on fire out of a church of maybe 30 pastors 27 of them when they come and hold the mic then you see on the board pastor this apostle this and you say my god who called this guy to ministry what is he saying opinions philosophies cunningly devised fables are we together now and look at the quality of men and women 
who are being produced is a disaster that requires a quick rescue many believers do not know God many believers do not know the Holy Spirit many believers do not know the voice of the Holy Spirit many believers do not know scripture many believers do not even understand the system of God many believers go to church I agree many believers take communion I agree many believers join in general church prayer I agree but very few believers have risen in spiritual orientation I'm not talking of men of God I'm talking of people who are healthy because of an atmosphere that is healthy the the kind of threat that the gate of hell is supposed to receive from the church has reduced grossly grossly we see the ease with which darkness looms around territories as though there are no believers there but the bible says you are the light of the world it didn't say you are the noisemakers it didn't say you are the discussers you are the light you bring illumination you are a city that is set on a hill I think it's Philippians chapter 2 when you read from verse 13 to 16 it starts by saying do everything without complaining or arguing I'm sure I'm right and then it says that he will be blameless um, okay for God it that he may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation what is your mandate among whom ye shine as lights in the world next verse it says holding forth 16 holding forth the word of life holding forth the word of life not cunningly devised fables not the discussions of men are we together we have lost too many things in the body of Christ we have lost power we have lost a voice no, we, we have to, we have been downgraded to a realm of Scientology and carnality. There must be a drastic upgrade. Otherwise, something will be wrong. We will not know the difference between spiritism and Christianity or Scientology and logic or some kinds of philosophical things. Are we blessed? Preserve us. Of the ordinances of God in a territory mandated to make sure every generation tastes the reality of the life of God for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you I will reverence you. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, John began to explain to us what he saw. And among many other things, John said he had a voice. And when he turned to see that voice, he saw seven lampstands. Listen carefully. And then John said, in the midst of the lampstand, there was one like the Son of Man. And he began to describe various attributes of him. And then it was God himself who began to give John that interpretation. He says that those lampstands represent the church, the ecclesia, God's body. The lampstands that Christ is found in the midst of them. That light that is also a city set on a hill that should never never be confused he says it is the church brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth christianity 
is not in danger. Listen carefully. Church is not in danger, but the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The ordinances, the secrets of God that is a portion to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger. We scarcely understand the secrets of God. The pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace, a man of power and relevance. I want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray. Six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory. Hallelujah. Wow. I'm seeing fire in the spirit. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Volcano in the spirit. Shabakato She goes like a volcano. Please, can another drummer sit down? Please let this gentleman go for somebody. This man is I'm still seeing this fire inside outside I'm seeing it it's like a volcano when when you see God doing these kinds of things this is not show it's not show he's bringing witness he's bringing witness to the spirit of man because the word of God must have an agency for performance he's, he's working on people I'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding then the fire is dropping on people this is what I see in the spirit this is what I see in the spirit. Shabarakata sikata. Shabregade malakota varianda kosi brada. It's making us witnesses. Testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. The death of a man of God should not end the move of God. There are many men of God, we talk about them. They left with the secrets because there were no men to receive. They left with the secrets. Elisha died. Till today, there are dimensions that would have been seen. Gehazi was not positioned to receive. God, God sees my heart. How that I desire that we become spiritual. 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 Not just supernatural. Spiritual. You must, you must understand the realm of the spirit. And sustain capacity to interact with that realm. Otherwise you will not do much. I promise you. That you must, you must learn how to walk with God such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway there is a pathway that produces that effect it's not an exclusive preserve of particular men there is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of god's presence it's like a perfume so every time you find expression, there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected. That's the realm where doubt dies. That's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away. You, you are not trying to show your anointed. Your presence always introduces a reality. You are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms. 
and for as long as you are there you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them this is not just talk 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 all this empty talk we keep mocking ourselves the bible says for i did not come to you with the excellency of speech it is not just about oratory no this is not grammar this is the reality the bible paul calls it the mystery of godliness that god can be embodied domiciled in an individual who was born of flesh and blood but produced an effect that is strangely supernatural no man is born with the anointing no man is born with the anointing no man is born with spiritual power men follow pathways is an ancient path that has been lost there's too much talk too much grammar too much preaching too much listening to every man of God's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage it, let me tell you the truth if we do not trust God to touch reality we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves do you know what what the average young preacher does hold on what the average young man not just your young, young believer who loves god does is he finds the tapes of five six seven eight men of god around the world and just puts them together and listens to them and there's nothing wrong with that but the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed that's a joke if that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man I is a is a big joke a big joke the realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom it's a place where men are made genuinely there there are there are there are capacities apportioned for people on grounds of working with the holy spirit only the holy spirit gives that ranking nobody you can pretend you have it many people pretend they have it but when the door settles down you hear the testimonies guy we have lost something serious we must trust god to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of god otherwise some of the young believers coming up the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again and then they get born again and they don't know what to do and it is this same confused us that have been ordained week in week out everybody is a general overseer everybody is a president everybody is an apostle everybody is a prophet everybody is a pastor hilarious ordinations happening left right and center and everybody is just holding the mic and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach I say this out of love for the body but we must return we are losing something we are losing something very powerful we are losing something the ordinances the precepts of the spirit there is a spiritual formula that men are subject to we are losing it in the name of ministry in the name of globalization in the name of making sure we expand no sir the average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not. The average believer does. The only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy, there is a consolation based on that energy. So it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered. What, what sort of an, an education is that? The average believer studies the Bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt. The personal guilt that comes from messages every Sunday that you must be spiritual. It is not a personal appetite. It's not a search. If, if that guilt were taken away from us, we would throw the Bible in a heartbeat. That's why we love using any other thing, job or whatever. It's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free so we can't say we are not serious so when there is a legitimate crown then we excuse it how the precepts of God are preserved in a territory I 
our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry Number one, the first way, listen carefully, that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory. Like our territory, Zaria here for instance, is prayer. Write it down, prayer. The first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer warfare and intercession write it down a lost act in the body of christ genuine warfare and intercession let me tell you something if we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another i promise you i promise you our our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God brothers and sisters it takes prayer it takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be open over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established warfare Ezekiel chapter 22 it's a long reading 23 to 31 but the verse of emphasis is verse 30 Ezekiel 22 please help us media Ezekiel chapter 22 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying long reading quickly please Just go to verse 30. Because at the, at the way we are going, we are going to waste too much time. And I sought for a man among them. Now this was God angry with a territory. That's why what I wanted us to read. But because of time, we'll just look at 30. God was angry with a territory. And was about to pour his indignation and his judgment. And God said, that mercy dimension of me was still there. But I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land for what for the land not for the church i'm talking about taking over territories preserving the precepts of god over a territory a man that will stand for the land so there are men that can stand for the land not just their churches that because of their presence and the business they do with God, certain things can happen to territories. They don't even know why it came and how it came. But a man stood for a land. That I should not destroy it, but I found... Did he say I did not find human beings? There were human beings. Many. But I found none. That man built in capacity and understanding. The ministry of prayer let me tell you this believe me hear me church of the lord jesus christ everywhere here in any nation but more specifically in zaria if we stop praying in zaria because of some kind of spiritual laziness you will be shocked the way darkness will prevail over the city are we together the ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation i don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of god or a civil servant or a politician the ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint not just need driven prayers alone but we must graduate from realms 
of just praying give me tea give me bread to taking over lands that because of your presence in the territory you subdue the controlling powers the powers that mold the mindsets of people the powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation that you come into a city and find accidents anyhow all kinds of things anyhow and you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory and part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy that you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers that's what men did in the Bible Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah are we together preserve the family of Lot the wife chose the way she wanted Joseph stood in preserve certain things Daniel stood in preserve are you not men who preserve the purposes of God your generation the ministry of warfare and prayer the ministry of warfare Ephesians chapter 6 when we read from verse 10 to 19 the Bible tells us listen carefully the Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might then it says we should put the full armor of God are we together then it says how that we we do not war against principalities and powers but against um, rulers and flesh and blood but principalities and powers and all of that it begins to tell us that in every territory these demonic structures exist hold on let me preach to educated people you know sometimes because we have gone to school because we are rich small money small job we um, and sometimes innocently and truthfully I hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well let me tell you something Satan is many things a fool is not one of them I hear what I'm saying Satan is defeated Satan is old Satan is several things but a fool is not one of them he has the advantage of age Time. he has studied mankind different species of people have lived upon this earth he has had an advantage of one-to-one -one experience Satan has existed before several dispensations before Adam's dispensation that brought us into the sea every territory has controlling powers every territory has controlling powers if you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory, brothers and sisters, it's not because the controlling powers are not there. An agency in the spirit, a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression. That's why I said if we stop praying, or if we concentrate on childish immature prayer lord give me tea tomorrow again oh god i forgot to ask for bread yesterday there is a place where you ask for your needs but notice how jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven we reverence you after reverencing him the next thing is your agenda your kingdom come your kingdom come your kingdom come upon a land upon a territory listen the concept of prayer chains, the concept of prayer groups, the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. Now, the, the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying, carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people. What is the name of this ministry of four of us? I don't know who taught us that prayer groups, prayer cells, prayer chains, there should be some structure of leadership. But, you know, we have this mentality and, and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of God. The moment people start praying, everybody is obsessed about who is the leader, who has the protocol to follow him. If, if we do like that, then the devil is going to destroy us. In every city and territory in Zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works I'm a good student of revivals that's how it should work 
in Samaru there should be units of men and women praying high in Dogo there should be people there has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis that's why I thank God for all the groups scattered around and notice that's what Satan hates the moment there are people praying some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere preserve us of the ordinances of God gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups now churches start as intentional organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of God are we together that before a man of God starts ministry he has sewn his clothes for one year are we together the offering basket has been made tight envelope is in is, is intact what is it we, we better be careful this joke that we keep joking with ourselves every correct ministry starts as same. it doesn't it? let me tell you most men of God that are being used mightily by God today ask them their intention was never ministry they were men who made themselves available when God called them they went back and cried and said God can you use somebody else God will say you are the person you can choose to say no but I'm not using any other person you are the one I will use but now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing and the devil doesn't, he, he doesn't stop us because there's, whether we are in it or outside, it's, there's, it makes no difference to him. We are still equally ignorant. Prayer. That's how this ministry started. Prayer. Every day, fire on the altar. And I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes. And you say, let's, let's thank God. That's Bible study. Prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit. Only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things. Strengthen the understandings of the people. The fire continues. This is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in eternity. Let me be honest with you. Many territories have a lot of repentance to do. Many families have a lot of repentance to do. The prayer lives of many people are under attack. When the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer, he tells your prayer to become a selfish one. So you are praying for hours, but you are making minimal, minimal spiritual progress. I insist, prayer chains, prayer groups, there are many of you here, that the body is in your hand it's not carnality and it is not ministry either when you let me teach you something every time you get to a new land before you get accommodation find somewhere where you can pray scan around the back of one tree shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody if that's good, dedicate it as an altar to start with don't go around and say where can i get a hotel and all this rubbish no find a place to pray somebody will join you another person will join you the devil is in trouble once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying apostle but what is the name of the ministry it's not it doesn't have a name the ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of god are portioned for that territory so it doesn't matter where you are the assignment is the same if you leave zaria for a three-week break and you are in kogi for that three week every demon and devil in Koki state will feel the fire when you return it doesn't matter someone else who is returning there so there's fire everywhere say everywhere but now you find out that some places are as cold as ice whereas some other places are on fire do you know whenever you travel for a ministry to a, to a ministry the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar the purpose is to carry like a coal you go and fetch some of it are we together that's why when i see people come from other places i like laying my hands on them it's not just for showmanship so you carry something the goal is to take it back to your territory the same way we do in the physical when they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them what do they do they pick one man is that true or a few people send them abroad for the training when they return back they teach the people not shine with it not shine with it this is where we are missing it train the people 
one of the biggest killers in ministry is tied to and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all, all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of god in many territories do you know there are people as students years ago there are people who had different prayer groups when when all of them were finishing they just left they've gone on other places doing great things but most of us you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper who is really the secretary among these five people we need to define it because the other day i didn't tell anybody to lead prayer and this other lady started leading. when did she join this thing before and you see we, we start politicizing it are you not from Madam Me too, I'm from Madam. That one came, I don't say from Lagos. He said, We don't want to bring all these kind of things. And we kill the move of God with very frivolous, childish things. Another thing that kills prayer is love. No, not love, relationship. Hello? I keep saying it. There are people till today, they have no business loving anybody. Please hear what I'm saying. All this thing of coming to the house of God for one month and you're already eyeing every sister, every brother, you are in love. No, sir. This is not how we train people. We train people to look for God first. Press into God. Have a testament, a, a track record. Then you can love. But now everybody is, is just, you, you come in two days, you are praying. People are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for for who it is to marry i'm not saying god cannot use those platforms in fact god should use them are we together however your heart if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first most people who become mightily used by god never go there to marry they go there to seek god they pray with all their heart and serve and one day while they are praying god will tell them you see this 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 lady it's even god that will tell them my son look you have been serving me sincerely this this one that you are serving you need a helper i said god i can continue god, it's me that i say you need a helper but now we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven a prayer request full of oh god won't i marry and god what have you done for me you have not done anything nobody has been saved as a result it's a scam to come to the house of god you are not contributing anything and the next thing you want to take and and usually it's god's best we want to take oh come on please Are we blessed let me be honest with you church of the lord jesus christ let's return to the place of seeking god sincerely and passionately or coming to the house of god and everybody is checking what did this one this prayer group ah i like these suits that this one is wearing i know no father your kingdom come in this territory there is darkness lord we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months that means there is a spirit passing through that territory unhindered and all of a sudden one faithful day that spirit will hear a sound from the earth Shakata, kata, kata. Le kota, kata, kata. as it's moving to high in dogo someone is taking it from there let me tell you how you drive spirits you make the heavens unconducive don't laugh at what i'm telling you i'm teaching you how this thing works because they will always leave where there is fire and settle down and wait for a backsliding territory and then return back this is how many of those we admire today that's how they were raised they were never and means here asking those of you who were there when koinonia when he and i started 
when you got born again in two weeks it will be as if you have spent one year in Christ because there was fire everywhere there still is but because we're a lot more organized now it is very difficult when people got there were people who would get born again filled with the Holy Spirit from day two they start prophesying and even with the prophesying they are not going anywhere because there are still demons to get out of there as they finish prophesying they go and humble themselves and sit down and learn but now someone gets born again after one month because of the gift of the spirit he prophesies she prophesies the next thing they start speaking to people they speak mistakes into the lives of people because they are seen correctly but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there and before you will now learn and grow you have misled several people gift is not maturity you need to stay with god no matter how you rush you must stay that fire that fire is the maker of men anybody that dodges fire don't trust him don't trust him you must be refined as of gold our desires and appetites must be put genuinely to seek god say amen, amen. prayer i'm encouraging you i'm encouraging the church in zaria i'm encouraging the church everywhere there must be prayer units most ministries do it but many ministries what what they do is not really prayer unit it's just maybe home sales which is wonderful I, I i don't have a problem with it do you know why we not do it as koinonia because you are an extension of the ministry the goal is not joshua selman in every home the goal is the kingdom the power the glory of god your house can become an altar your small area can become an altar two of you three of you can begin to pray it doesn't matter that god started with you it doesn't need to have a name the name is prayer seven to nine five to six in the morning nine to ten every day or two days in a week or three days in a week you do this and see what begins to happen let me tell you what begins to happen the moment you pray there will first be silence one month two months you will start seeing physical agitations the demons that are resident in men will start reacting something is happening in the realm of the spirit your own loved ones will start fighting you for reasons you cannot explain and say look um you are becoming proud and you say no no sir i'm not because you are becoming proud the moment they say that remember spiritual intelligence you know it's not the individual you you respect the body but go back in the spirit and say satan i'm still there i know it's you jesus looked at peter and said satan get thee behind you and you go and continue and then one day let me tell you how god will announce that he has come to that territory a spectacular move of god will happen one day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of God breaks out in that house. Breaks out in a house where they hate the Holy Spirit. Guess who the first to be filled with the Holy Ghost will be? The Father himself. Shakata, bakata. And you are wondering, my father? My father? Yes, your father. This controversial person who is so scientific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one God. Your prayer the Holy Spirit has been eyeing him and on that day we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are it should be a place to come and receive a greater fire can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory? Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, find 
a space through me. Lord, in prison, we represent an extension of that altar of prayer. Share it on our Hallelujah. Listen, let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact, not titles. If you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church, lock it down and go and start praying. Alone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't invite anybody. Let them come and meet you praying. And you are praying and God is watching you. My beloved son. No carpet. No canopy. No mic. No suit. No nothing but a genuine desire to seek him and God is saying I, I am watching listen all this all this running around am I a prophet or am I apostle is nonsense it is the place of prayer and work. there is nobody that starts ministry and starts working with God knowing who he is even if God tells you it will not look like that are you hearing what I'm saying all this I am apostle this just wait and see it will happen you are joking nothing will happen it is in the place of prayer as that fire refines you it starts drawing you to become something and everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet even you you may mistake yourself for an evangelist because the only thing you did was crusade but then it's eventually as it's building you you know that no this training is not an evangelist training ah, why is this unusual ah, there are people who think they are calling they are some of you here seated you are born prophets with the office of a prophet but you have not seen one vision because it's not about the vision keep praying just continue just continue you will argue with anybody and say, no, sir, I'm not a prophet. Me, I, I know I'm a pastor because I'm a good teacher. You will find out that teaching is not even part of it. Just keep praying. The refiner's fire comes through that prayer. When your heart is being purged, are we together now? Flesh is being taken away. One day, you will begin to pray. And all of a sudden, you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension. Many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me, they are wrong. They don't know. It is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you, you say you are a pastor, who told you? Just because someone prophesied, he saw a part and he said, so he may be right, but he may not be it. No, don't say just because you saw a ring, you saw a hand, you say, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophetess, I'm an apostle. No, sir, don't flatter yourself. Let the place of prayer incubate you. When you come out fully, the name that you are will be shown, not just by titles, results, results. Results will show who you are. If you're a prophet, don't tell us. Let the results show it. Show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer. Show us the acumen, the ability to perceive realities. That's what makes a prophet. Show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit. Don't come and talk jargons and waste our time. Show us the performance that comes based on the word of God. Show us the throne in heaven that backs that office. Don't say I'm an apostle. Show us the throne that backs you. Show us the keys of the territory that was given to you. We go around bragging, calling ourselves names, flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves. Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God.
to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. The ordinances that help men to walk with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shakata kata. Leketo satos kapriata. Restore my fire. Restore it, oh God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. Makato kata kata kata. Sheketekete. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the Spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail. Ongoing, 
I'm in ministry. I know how busy ministry can be. Let me tell you, you need to love God beyond money and beyond members and beyond power to remain prayerful as a man of God. No matter, you can be leading a prayer movement. It's no guarantee that you pray yourself. You can pray whenever you are with the people. It's no guarantee. Many prayer, many men of God that lead prayer groups, I tell you, their own prayer lives is dying. I tell you this as a man of God. Because it is hard work for a man of God to be consistent in prayer and be in ministry. There are ladies that don't pray. Don't pray. Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion. Look good. But it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. Can we pray in the spirit just for one minute? Just, just to allow the Holy Spirit to bring this. There are gentlemen that don't pray. We are overconscious of ourselves. No, sir. Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. prayer preserve prayer in every territory preserve it in your house preserve it in your life preserve it everywhere don't let it go no matter who laughs at you no matter how western those of you listening from other nations of the world restore prayers back to your homes restore prayer back to your churches whether you are in America whether you are in London it doesn't matter where restore prayer back prayer has equal value everywhere whether you are rich or poor your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life number two how are the ordinances of god advanced and preserved a regular convergence of believers within, within that territory the second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped empowered there is no territory that can preserve her spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers be it a regular church service be it a midweek service be it different interdenominational programs it doesn't matter there has to be a regular convergence there must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered then they also receive the blueprint of god's current emphasis is one of the highest advantage of coming together when believers come together the whole territory can hear what god is doing now don't assume that because god moved in a particular way yesterday that's what he's still doing today When a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133, a convergence for the purpose of being equipped, it is for this reason that God anointed some. He gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory. So what, what happens here every week is the will of God. A convergence of men and women. Are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd, 
there, there is a joke are the people cheers the more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of God the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of five million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't Jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation then any other person who is interested no he died for the whole world don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of God and the women of God may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd when you reject it it looks like you are being spiritual but that's been carnal anybody that knows God must love people Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little hit somewhere they said I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too ah, 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 steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings the crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds god brought them don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places god is doing mighty things this place is one of them the bible says and the lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by God to find salvation there must be a regular convergence when Satan wants to frustrate the purposes of God in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank God for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of 
what God is doing in that ministry to connect and follow. There are all kinds of opportunities for growth. Number three. How is the kingdom advanced in a territory? How are the ordinances of God preserved in a territory? Ready? An open display of real miracles, signs, and wonders beyond the church walls. Let me tell you how God is institutionalized in a territory. An open display, not a private, quiet, secret, doubtful manifestation of his power. An open display of real genuine miracles, signs, wonders that are beyond the church wall. Out of all the miracles Jesus performed, please write it and look up. Out of all the miracles Jesus performed, less than one percent of them was done in the church. Is that true? He was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body. They were going out. A woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring God glory the glory God receives is in the announcing of what he has done I know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of God our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of God here you must trust God for grace for instant performance of the word instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching God in action you saw it before during and after when Jesus finished declaring his his um, call in Luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for starters to prove to you the hand of God is upon me Mr. Man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you will be criticized and hated but I assure you God will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in god because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day god anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say god revealed to me that in in five months they are going to tar this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months you don't need to tell them God has done it. The next time they see you, that convicting power, the day you now speak and say, I saw death in this community, they will not laugh at you again. They do not take our word serious. Do you know why? Bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God. Something that defies principalities and signs and wonders most of this open display is largely done in the south that's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there the, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings the miracles that happen you will see people sitting on the street selling akara selling pap and watching people rise up from wheelchairs now let me tell you it does not matter how hardened you are if you see a real miracle you must go back and think about it you can choose to argue but the truth still remains the truth what has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting those who have laughed at you and said koinonia every time you must trust god for an open display everybody say an open display that one day 
you step into the parlor and all of a sudden someone that is to go for surgery maybe your loved ones just because you stepped in there while they are busy criticizing a man of god on tv you look and say daddy the lord just said i should tell you that this cancer is gone and he loves their young boys i was with you i was i remember serving god in boys brigade when i was growing up while they are talking all that drama there is instant miracle and he touches his stomach he will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say no no what is happening and within a short time the lord is glorified let me tell you what they will start calling you uh, where is prophetess pastor evangelist we're about to pray is god saying anything that's a sign that god is working god is working something powerful in this time god is raising mighty men in our days he won't stop he won't stop till his church looks like him he won't stop no he won't stop till my life looks like him acts chapter 19 please quickly acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship the anointing is a silencer of doubters charles and francis hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is worth a thousand words our noise is too much we need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles. By the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body. This is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body we are brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons today we just use it out of showmanship a man of god just says hey, what did you say is wrong with you sir darkness is all over our house so bring this handkerchief i hold it we spit on it we rub it on our face people carry it back home like a charm one year after that handkerchief arrived home nothing happened it's a sign that there's no power period obed edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time. But something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered. And after two weeks you come back one month. Nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you, with me. I should go back for a retreat and say lord these hands otherwise a day will come the hands will just look like tissue paper as it's coming on your head you believe that nothing is happening keep these hands anointed oh god keep these hands anointed keep these hands anointed that's a good prayer to pray for yourself keep these hands anointed may i never stand upon the stage and waste the time of god's people may i never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change this is not about showmanship when your hands are empty you are not in ministry let me tell you you are just you are just a no Abba. believe what i'm saying keep these hands preserve it preserve your grace preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon his hand he said god brought mighty miracles give it to us again please by the hands of paul what is happening through your hands nothing 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 you don't have to be in church what is happening through your hands what happens to my destiny if i shake you you claim that god lives in you brothers and sisters what has happened to your hands nothing oh let me agree with you and we hold people 
while we are praying their eyes are opening we are the only ones who close our eyes because they don't believe in us they know that that prayer is just nonsense in jesus name amen they say thank you sir and they go back and say sorry can i see this man of god because that's the real person they know who solve their problems i want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute and say lord put something upon this hand put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes it's not a carnal prayer i want you to sincerely pray shake it like a source of a copia. Put an anointing upon my hands, oh God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone. And with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves, upon them which had an evil spirit. You know, the name of the Lord saying, We adjure you. They thought it's just by, by big manism or wearing nice clothes. And one day, they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits. Are we together now? We are reading to verse 20. And then 14 says, And there were seven sons of one skiva, a Jew and a chief of the priest, which did so. 15. And the evil spirit answered them. That's the side effect of lack of true power. It's not that the devil is trying to confess. This is not confession. This is a question. You, are, you, are, you, you stupid man of God. You think everybody is faking it. He called those who are real. Known by the realm of the spirit. Not by members. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hi. Who are you? When a demon spirit asks you who are you. Is that a nice thing? From the realm of the spirit. They are watching you every day. You have one suit. You went for a program. They kept water in front of your table. They did a, a good publicity. And they said, now it's time for the man of God, a man of strange anointing. And you hold the mic. And you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you. And all of a sudden, the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed, just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry i don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army make progress verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Let me give you a very true secret. The power of God is unlimited. But its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors. Which includes their level of spiritual growth. You must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually. There are many arrogant people 
they will do anything you are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free you just get up by yourself carry a bottle of oil and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft I'm, I'm, I'm in Christ and you go there as soon as you get there you start pouring oil around the compound nobody talks to you you just find out that that night as you are sleeping the next day you get up and find yourself in the hospital what happens they say that's how the spirits work they don't talk to people the next thing you just whatever happens to you is their answer listen it's not everything you see that is that is all that there is when you see a man of god moving in the anointing it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening but there are interplay of spiritual laws a man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder and you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere when that man if he's spiritual if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done are we together it's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever no that's why we must grow but as we grow, we must trust God to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight. There are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed, one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough. It will take the corporate body to bring it. We do not know. And one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him. So we must have that. That's just a lesson for us to learn. Let's read down, please, quickly. Media, don't take it away. Just leave it there so that we'll hurry up, please. Help us. And this was known to all the community. Are you seeing now? Something unpleasant now is known to all the community. Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear came upon them. And the name of the Lord was magnified. They saw the apostles healing the sick. And I'm sure that they said, what is there? What is there? Miracles. Anybody can heal. The sons of Sceva went to try it. When the demons beat them, it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere. And the Bible says that the people glorified God. And then verse 18 says, and many that believed did what as a result? They came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19, we are reading to 20. Many of them which also used curious acts. That means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it. It was working small by small. But when certain men came into that city, they got everyone packing out, including magicians. Do you think if that book did not do something for them, wouldn't they have thrown it since? They saw something superior and powerful. And the Bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who? A community. Imagine a popular herbalist in Bromo or somewhere, maybe Zaria City, bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and say, I was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady. And just because I saw her cat walking, I thought it was all about the reform. When I touched fire, I got a reply and a response that I have never seen for 30 years of herbal practice. This is what happened there. And they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver. 20 popular scripture. So mightily grew the word of God. Why? Because of a public display of miracles, signs and wonders. We need the supernatural. We need to cry for the anointing. We need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives. Man of God, don't preach without power. It's not about saying, there's somebody here. The power of God will throw you. That's not what we are talking about. That, that's not power. We are talking of results. Results. Undeniable results. Like some of you are seated here now, you are coming for the first time. You will not need to tell people you came for koinonia. You will just go back and all of a sudden you find out that something has shifted. You open your Bible 
a true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter is until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely let me give us one more there are six but I'll just stop at number four so that we pray number one is prayer number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory number three an open display of miracle signs and wonders beyond the church walls number four intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers the fourth way the ordinances of god are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers this is a serious one let me tell you this failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget god not just forget his ordinances but forget god i'm watching that and i'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of christ and even the church in zaria who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now everybody has left them and we're focusing on ministry who are the people mentoring those in secondary school thank god for fcs thank god for um, um cem thank god for all of these people but there are some of you here you need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like shade's child here that by the time they are growing they are not only receiving education alone there must be an intentional mentorship of younger people most people is the mistake of the american church they left their children so you will see a mother who was an old baptist woman served god all her life but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love god we must concentrate right now most people from the ages of 17 downwards all they are obsessed about is phones android devices ps4 i don't have a problem with it but their entire obsession oh what os are you using you hear that that's all they think about oh i'm using this ps4 there's this they need fire oh they need they are not too young they need serious fire i'm not against that it's the reality that comes with that age range but we must be able to guide people that's why i love it when you see our children come here for koinonia i know that many of you say ah, are they too young to understand ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand you see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down that's the child of a herbalist and they tell you ah that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe that small boy you are saying that is my son is your son in the physical in the realm of the spirit is something else an ancient spirit is seated on that small child there is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things they may be too small to articulate it but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Second Timothy. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. He said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too. A superstar lifestyle is not God's plan. God's plan is not superstar Apostle Joshua Selman. God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace, certain precepts. And your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so. May God forbid that the day will come in Zaria when the average young man does not know God. Say Amen. May God forbid that in Zaria during a church service, who we'll have young people hanging around sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the god who can change any man's destiny may god forbid that is not your child that will refuse to know god listen 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 our children must love god and they must love god genuinely somebody 
is indoctrinating a generation to hate God. I want you to beware. There is a secret indoctrination of a generation. Ages 5 to 15 must be preserved. Those of you here that God is calling you into children ministry, receive an anointing for it. It's not all about giving children biscuits and sweets. Let them cram the memory verses. That's how we started. Children now don't know any memory verse again. You ask them, John 3.16, they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense. Teach them. Don't say it's not useful. Let them know. When we were being raised, they taught godly songs. Now in most schools, children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents. A little child is singing a song that even as an adult, you look at him and say, no, this should not be. There must be restoration of godliness. CEM, may God anoint you more and revive you more. Please. FCS, may God anoint you and revive you more. Individual children ministry groups, may God anoint you and revive you more. Because if you yourself are not revived, what will you teach the children? Bad things. Bad things. That's what our children learn now. Things that are more than their age. And we say it does not matter. It matters. You have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things. Don't let them watch it. Don't let them watch it. There are times you need to regulate. I'm not, I'm not trying to be harsh. But there are times you need to regulate all these this a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen, amen. you don't like what i'm saying i don't plan to stop at all we must say it again and again some of you god gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools not with the name of any ministry and bless them but now that you have become apostle joshua selman you have become madam madam whatever businesswoman or whatever you have stopped go back repent and go back we have this mentality that when we are ministering to children it's a sign that we ourselves are children it's the society that makes it so in a bit to show that we are matured we leave the children and say, look, let's start talking to married men. Jesus said, let the little children come to who? Come to me. He says, and do not forbid them, for for such is the kingdom of heaven. Please return back to children ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. When a child looks at you and does like this to you, don't smile at the child and rub the head. Carry the hand and spank it and say, no, you don't do like this. You greet people. Are we together? Most of us watch children do all kinds of things. A visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching. Is that good? Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but a rod of correction, not discussion. You don't have to be hostile on children. A little spank with two fingers, one, two, and then tell them what they did that was wrong. Don't just leave them cry. This is what you did. Mommy does not like it. Daddy does not like it. For that reason. One, two. Jesus too does not like it. In include Jesus. Let them learn. And know that it's not just you alone. Preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom. There's this song that says, Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. I made a vow that for as long as I'm alive my generation must know God it's a covenant I've entered with myself there's no going back there's no discussion there's no hope of going back 
to go back is to die in life and in death is a vow and a covenant I made with myself and everything around my life it is to serve him forever and to introduce him to a generation God is waking us up stop playing games don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people you can start now some of you you are the first born you are the only one who knows God in your house your, your fourth born can look at you and say stupid girl that's a joke you need to cast out that demon out of your head and organize a standard Bible study using a koinonia message and tell them sit down you are 10 years older than him is insulting you you beat that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined the day I give birth to a child who insults me that, that day I'm not going to concentrate on the child. The spirit that could enter my roof through that child. A child of, maybe it's a child of two, three years, nine, ten years. No. See, am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though about to marry. Never over pamper children let them know discipline is part of love because most of our children will be born in millionaire families you must discipline them Don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society pray they say no I, the church is hot please daddy can you give me the car to the jeep no son you are sitting down here if me your father the owner of the jeep the jeep is sitting down you must sit down and pray Let's go back to our primary schools. I'm serious, I'm rounding up. Let's go back to our secondary schools. Gone are the days when teachers, including Christian schools, I don't know what is Christian about the school if they don't pray. You have a Christian school and you openly said it's a Christian school and at the beginning of the class, they don't pray. What, what, is, what is the Christian about it? The teacher himself cannot pray. You never see a fasting program organized in the school. Nobody cares. While they are praying, the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again. Wait and let Koinonia start her schools. Oh yes. Oh yes. Let Koinonia start her schools. And you will see. There's nothing like I'm busy who will supervise it. It's a mandate. Don't do that and busy man of God and allow the devil kill your ministry. Sit down, open your eyes and see what is happening. This teacher's life is questionable. He's destroying the life of the student. Call him to the office. Sir, we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you, but we notice that um, it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children. Could there be a problem? Would you need some counsel? Nobody should talk to me. I'm doing all that nonsense. I tell him, as you finish this rubbish, collect your last salary with the cashier, go out of this place and never return. Any good PTA, they should clap for you as the director of that school and say you are preserving standards. They laughed at Covenant University, laughed at Landmark University, laughed at Mountaintop University, but these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to Cambridge and Harvard because they kept God. Don't throw God and think it will go well with you. We'll continue next week. Six precepts to keep and preserve God in a territory. Which one have you missed? Would it be prayer, warfare, and intercession? Could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers? You come to the house of God today, you come after one month, or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your arrears are paid only to come and testify have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere what is it still doing there when you come from that family apostle can you come and visit us try first try first 
don't get used to all this. I, I love, I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. I carried that understanding back home. And I said, Daddy, I know that for 35 years, no door has opened in this family. But I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing. I'm using the opportunity of this strike. Can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does? And in two days, something that did not happen in 30 years happens. You have revealed Christ to that environment. And finally, we must mentor the younger believers. But the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored. Because there are many proud, proud people, proud people. You touch somebody, he just falls down. And you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around. Colleague mentality. Some of you, you are in secondary school. Or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school. Thank God for what God is doing with them. And all of a sudden, this pompous, arrogant attitude. You see everybody and what is there. You see vision, I see vision. You pray for the sick, I pray for the sick. It's why we never receive. We keep making mistakes that are avoidable. Mistakes. Now let me tell you, mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing. Because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored. But they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing. And they taught them rubbish. They taught them pride. They taught them a pompous life. They taught them a theology of imbalance. It matters who you listen to. It matters who you open up your spirit to. But that spirit must be open. Brothers and sisters, our generation is at stake. In the next 10 or 20 years, many of the people we look at today will be gone. It's, it's the truth. Do you believe that? Many of our fathers, they are already wrapping up. We insulted them. We said, ah, they came and they taught people, cover your head, don't cover your head. We insulted them. They taught people, die, 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 die. We insulted them. Now the button is being passed to us. Let's hear what our children will say about us. We insulted them. We refused to see what God was doing to them. And as young as we are, we kept running our mouth insulting them. They preserved the button. Some of them today, look at great men like Papa Ilya Deboe. People like Billy Graham still alive. These men serve God to the end. Let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency. That's the song, my very powerful song. That's the last song we'll sing this night. When it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life? I can't remember it again. Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, listen, all my treasures will be nothing. The jeep and the duplex, only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Am I against prosperity? No. But if that's all you can give a generation, if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree you have failed lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in mary clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've told me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life 
when life is gone listen we are not going to be here forever no matter how you don't want to believe me nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old 200 years ago none of us on earth today was on earth live your life foolishly we owe our generation and our children a debt I will never except God takes my life but it will not be when I'm alive that I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth if it means my life going for it let it go but the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation this is ministry if you are not ready for this don't jump around and talk nonsense a lady sent me a text today passionately she may be following listening and she said apostle she's from my village she said apostle come to my village why have you not come i said don't worry you think i won't come there i'm coming god is counting on you listen carefully i'm rounding up god is counting on you i'm not a man of god it doesn't matter there are souls if god planned that in pastor alpha's lifetime you are supposed to save 100 million people do you know if you save 20 million people the world will clap for you but it's when you get to heaven god will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest if god has anointed you to heal 1 million people and you documented 100,000 testimonies they will register you in the Christian Hall of Fame. But when you get to heaven, you hear nonsense. Our works will be tried by fire. Let's make business with God. This wastage of time. Let us start with our Jerusalem, Zaria. Let us start with Nigeria. You see what is happening in Nigeria? You know what most of us are doing? What is happening in this nation? Those who are for A, those who are for B. But the preservers of the ordinances of God know that there are spirits. They can read the writings on the wall. That this is not an issue of north, south, east or west. This is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love God. And the preservers of the truth say, it doesn't matter where I come from. Lord, it is your kingdom that must be established. Can we take a few minutes to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus. And let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Revival. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shakata Makoto Lord, we pray the glory of God across Zaria City, across Savo. Across prison, across Shika, in the name of Jesus, your ordinances in this land is preserved, preserved in our campuses, preserved in every church, preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord. We decree it and we declare it. Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth 
is looking for those who make intercession on behalf of your nation those who will rise up and pray who stand on the gap on behalf of our land we stand in the gap on behalf of our land come on our knees we'll take a stand and pray for the sea for our land we'll pray for the needs of our land listen to the second part it says the power of darkness release our land will never prevail will never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion those who will rise up and pray who stand in the gap on behalf of our land we stand in the gap on behalf of our land down on our knees we take a stand and pray for the seed of our land for the need of our land controlling powers over zaria we curse you lift your voice and pray we curse you from region to region shakatos kaparia tadas kalepai embrake the powers that keep men poor the powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land the powers that stop development the powers that stop advancement the powers that destroy men of god the powers that destroy churches the powers that destroy families we come against you by the blood we come against you by the blood as the church of the lord jesus we come against you we come against you controlling powers over territories spirits of violence spirits of wickedness yokes burdens spells enchantments divination manipulations of the heavenly bodies we come against you in the name of Jesus the body of Christ grows Zaria grows whether Christians whether Muslims we advance in this city we are the light of the world in the name of Jesus everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church hallelujah i know our time is gone but can we pray for nigeria we listen as god looks at the map he's looking for incense he has found it in other locations zaria must represent itself in the realm of the spirit let god not see different localities some villagers and god will see an uneducated woman intercessor and check zaria and say zaria where is your incense i like us to pray and say nigeria is my business nigeria is god's business peace to the walls peace to the borders Peace in the east, peace in the north, peace everywhere. We fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare. We manifest our priesthood. We are lampstands. We are lampstands, priests unto God. We raise an incense. 
of the challenges that we have in our lives are dependent on these things whether you are standing whether you are at the window whether you are everywhere following online just go ahead and connect don't allow the little inconveniences to distract you it's a very serious prayer everyone that ask it receive it lord increase my greatness increase my greatness comfort me increase my greatness for the sake of my family members increase my greatness for the sake of the gospel increase my greatness for the sake of the ministry the church you have committed increase my greatness for the sake of the lost souls millions billions of them increase my greatness for the sake of having your purposes preserved within a territory hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed let me just talk about one key there are many but for tonight just to add to what i've shared just one key that can help us grow in greatness greatness is a system remember that the kingdom of god operates on mysteries and systems say after me mysteries say after me systems the kingdom of god is systemic god never does the same thing twice when he does a thing once he creates a system around it for continuity are we together he never created the plants and the animals twice he did it once and put a seed in it for reproduction he made one man one woman never to make another one again 
are we together there is a system so if your life is to excel it must be built on systems if your life is built on miracles as much as you are going to receive them miracles are a sign that something went wrong and the sovereignty of god is intervening to correct we were never designed to live off miracles listen very carefully if you live off miracles you will live a frustrated life we live off principles we live off the systems of the kingdom the systems of god create predictability they are an attestation to his justice the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne never mistake a miracle to mean that's how god wants it to continue a miracle is a stepping in of god to correct something that shouldn't be you are working properly when your life is systemic are we together first corinthians chapter 4 please give us verse 1 and verse 2 let's talk about just one key here faithfulness see after me faithfulness second corinthians chapter 4 it says let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ paul is speaking now and stewards paul uses a very interesting language not not owners he calls them stewards the word steward is the word caretaker caretakers of the mysteries of god number two it says moreover it is required in stewards if it is true that you are a steward there is a requirement and it says moreover it is required in stewards that a man whoever says he is a steward must exhibit a character called faithfulness faithfulness it says must be found faithful there are many people who may never rise beyond their current levels of influence their current financial level their levels of the anointing of revelation because they have other things but they lack this quality faithfulness in the kingdom you grow it looks simple but write it in the kingdom you grow and jesus grew in wisdom jesus grew in stature jesus grew in favor with god and with men we live in a time where we admire people's results every time we see uncommon results whether in the area of the anointing the demonstration of the spirit revelations influence etc every time we see that people are stepping into unusual levels of grace we don't admire the process we rather admire the results hallelujah i see people come to me and i know they are well-meaning and they just kneel down and say sir double portion of your anointing and i said look, look at what this guy is asking are we together it looks like a very that's why some of you came here probably to get a double portion the mother of james and john came to jesus and said jesus i have a request on behalf of my two sons you've been seeing them you've, you've you see how faithful they have been in your ministry would you grant because the way you are going you are going to overthrow caesar would you grant that when all is said and done let my kids sit at your left and right and jesus looked at her he never said it's an impossible request he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism two things one works internally the other one works externally but both must happen to qualify you the seat is vacant but can you drink this one is not a gift it's a reward are we together now one of the requirements is faithfulness there are pastors who will never rise beyond certain membership barrier because they are not faithful god gives you three members you look at them and feel they are not relevant at all are we together oh these members are not serious you are three all of you are broke none of you is smart none of you is working i'm the one who pays your transport what kind of useless membership is this and god is watching and then you admire another church with choice 
uh what do we call it choice membership this one is working in oil company i said these, these are the kind of members and we we have the effrontery to go back to the secret place and cry that god will find a way of drawing those people from that church to bring it to our church and god says look at this the kind of believers that are being produced within this region no understanding it is required in stewards in men of god in business people in young people in students in whatever dimension of life that you be faithful listen very carefully be faithful be faithful never follow a man who does not have a track record of growth you are only wasting your time no matter how flamboyant the results are it's a mirage anybody who stumbles into financial prosperity is joking is joking i repeat is joking anybody who just stumbles into the anointing is still joking anybody who stumbles into revelation is joking there must be a track record in life your track record is what gives value to your current stature faithfulness here's what jesus has to say about this luke chapter 16 please give us verse 10 to 12 jesus is teaching here luke chapter 16 10 to 12 he says he that is faithful listen now jesus is teaching here it was the the parable of of the unjust servant whose master was about to banish him and he went to reduce the bills for several people so that when he was banished he would now rush to them uh, and jesus is using the opportunity to teach us something here that he that is faithful in that which is least is what he didn't say will be is already i can know whether you qualify for your next level in life by what you are doing with the current level is faithful also in much and he that is unjust please go back to verse 10 he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much next verse 11 if therefore ye have not been faithful he's speaking in the context of resources now in unrighteous mammon your naira and kobo he says who will commit to you the true riches you know what the true riches are things that money cannot buy but can buy money true riches money itself is a commodity there is something that buys it true riches are you getting what i'm saying now in our world today if you have money you can buy everything but god is saying that money itself like you sell phones money is a product too there is something that can buy it it's called true riches so when god tests you let me tell you what this is saying let me use um let me bring out a thousand naira look at this this is one thousand naira do you know god can arrange favor compass of Femi. i can see him already warming up to be a very can i mean look at the see how sharp he's looking praise the lord now watch this do you know that in your walk with god a time can come god can just open a door for you hundred thousand comes you are not rich this is unrighteous mammon he's testing you you are rich when he gives you what can buy this you are not rich if you have this this, this is nonsense anything can happen set this on fire you can't pack the ashes to court and say this was one thousand true riches is what can buy this product not shoe buy this this one so he's watching you and he gives you this and you are not faithful in it you misuse it you waste it the kingdom does not benefit from it he says no there is an anointing i can give you that will bring this you have not qualified i tested you with this and you failed are we together god can bring a relationship come god can bring a relationship to your life that you know you didn't even qualify for it is a test you misuse that relationship you take advantage of the people and you don't even max you don't value them 
and then all of a sudden you cannot be given the true riches that can buy greater relationships faithfulness is a powerful spiritual quality powerful spiritual quality many people are not faithful that's why they pray they fast oh god drive fast seven days 40 days lord give me more anointing give me this give me that and then one day god leads you to one old woman and god says take care of this woman your destiny is to walk in the healing ministry but he won't start by giving you the healing anointing he will start by creating compassion in you take care of this old woman and you say oh god this old woman how much will i get from this woman i need something that i will shine so that from that shining to be on youtube and then it will be on all the social media platforms and up i go and god says you see that there's no faithfulness and while that is happening god is watching one young lady somewhere taking care of the woman mama are you okay and she's she's writing her promotion exams through faithfulness she may not know but she's walking herself to a realm of the anointing one day she'll finish taking care of that woman and say father thank you for the privilege my mother was never alive for me to be able to take care of her but thank you for giving me such an old woman and the heavens are open over that young lady a strange anointing comes upon her two years later that lady is walking in a dimension of the healing anointing that nobody can explain and people criticize where did this girl come from from nowhere i've told you there's nobody that comes out from nowhere that you are not aware of the training does not mean they were not trained there is nobody that comes out of nowhere it's a lie when you are in the cave of adulam it's a lonely place when you manifest people say ah this person is lucky no there's no luck in this thing is god speaking to us many of us god trusted us with finances we were not faithful many of us today if i tell you lift your prayer request now you will see prayer point one breakthrough prayer point two financial rest prayer point three financial favor it's still the same thing you are writing just different versions so that however god wants to answer it he should just answer it are we together lord increase in membership did you know while i was praying i was already set to come the rain started all i was doing i i found tears coming out of my eyes because i was thinking i said my god my god these these people now how 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 do we manage these people but many of you ah, they've come let them come you know you are the superstar when you think like that you will never rise don't forget that men may not know while you are looking at this but there is a god who has the all-seeing eye that looks at you and knows that this man of god should not rise are we together many of us want resources as i've lifted this one thousand now many of you have been looking at it you are not even hearing me again listen you are not faithful if you are faithful is proof that you are a steward can god give you this and say let me have it back and you say lord it's yours it's proof of faithfulness lord after all it came from you i i you took me from nowhere soaking gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need a secular need that will release it the voice of god has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking that we are having dreams and seeing god is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with god you won't find anything are we together i've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody i was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight 
I had prepared, fasted, prepared to go there, and then the rain started, and the people were expecting me. And that time there was no protocol to come, put umbrella, etc. All of these formalities. That was how I, I rolled my sleeves, rolled my trouser, and held my Bible. I started praying in tongues in the rain. Lord, don't mind me being soaked. Just bless your people. If your people are blessed, I am satisfied. Are we together now? I remember going there and then to make matters worse, the church didn't even make arrangement for Umbrella to receive me. It was then Steve Strings who saw me from outside and collected. He was also invited. He collected an Umbrella to run, go and receive me outside. When I came in, they asked me to wait. They had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down. It looked painful. It looked ego stinging. But it was a test of faithfulness. Can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted? Not everybody will insult your reputation. Keep forbearing with those who don't value you. Then you will qualify for those who can value you. There are some of you today, you will go to minister somewhere, they will disrespect you. Some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value. Keep at what you are doing. You will come to a point where God will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry. And my goodness, happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless. My life was not always like this. This ministry was not always like this. The first crusade, you see crowds everywhere and we're happy. Many of you who follow me on Facebook or follow, follow the ministry, uh, on facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time i travel many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because i'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness i've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together I told you about our first crusade i think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground i'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one-on-one -on -one. it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you. Are we together? There are men of God who start in ministry. Everybody they see is their colleague. Take it easy. Move gradually. No, I'm anointed. If not because of condition. Don't I have a better revelation than Kenny? And God keeps you there. Say, stay there. I just caught a new revelation. There's nobody to hear you because there is no track record. You can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why God keeps him there. Faithfulness. All he may say is, God bless you. God lift you. God anoint you. And then you are there in your pride and arrogance. I just finished pieces in the book of Ephesians and you will remain there for many years. Is God speaking to us? Never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness lord this is the level of grace that you have given me i am happy i am proud of it lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs i know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs i receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say kai oh god if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness Matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you Matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 I just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent 
and this to the one who had five his lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou hast been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient i'm coming i'm not ashamed to say god is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me i will teach i will make bible study notes and god is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou has been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have is a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations and then it says but from him that hath and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you that something is wrong with your stewardship when god increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from god that i trusted you with 30 people and i observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that 
you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what i'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be hallelujah yes ago i had a conversation we're about to pray with a gentleman and he asked me a very honest question he said apostle i've come for koinonia and i've seen the crowds of people and he asked a question he said can you reproduce these results and i said that's not me to answer you are asking time not me keep watching and i think two weeks ago he sent me a text you know just joking i'm, I'm just saying it and he's just sent a text and he said apostle you are dangerous i say i'm not dangerous the laws of god are dangerous it is not me it is the laws of god whoever will keep these truths it will work for you are you getting what i'm saying even if you are afraid of yourself trust his laws and watch them shock you and make a wonder out of your life brothers and sisters listen to me in a few minutes now we're going to begin to pray and many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic it is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you there is a system in the kingdom we make our boast first in the lord and then in the power of his might his might the power of his might the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think he's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah I challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust God to go back and say Lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now I want to show you a very dangerous scripture that God opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if God does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there 
but it takes God to open your eyes Psalm 77 turn there let me show you something Psalm 77 and verse 19 Psalm 77 verse 19 give us from amplified if it's possible Lion of Judah my trust is in you Alpha and Omega my trust is in you I am that I am my trust is in you tonight I put them on you my trust is in you it says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle he said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble he says and your path through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it he says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at a water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rain challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah I, uh. but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there, but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. When God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things, it's not just a ritual. There is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained. That every time you come before God, he must open a way. So don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say, I went to every church. I don't know what the church you went to believe. But in this sanctuary, there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere 
with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i'd like you to believe there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth, testifiers of His faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again and this is the song we'll be singing forever oh is the lord oh is the lord listen it is our confidence in god and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of god and access to the ways of god we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ 
verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but he won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace Grant me the grace. Hallelujah. Just pray one prayer. Lord, change my story. Visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith. Change my story. Visit me. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight is an unusual service because time has gone. We are going to be very, very fast. Very, very fast at that. Um, like I told us, we are going to start praying for the sick. We'll start by praying for the sick. And um, now this is how we are going to do it. Because of, because of, those of you outside, don't worry. You don't worry. Wherever you are, you will be attended to. Are we together? You will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now 
please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting god for healing is a miracle service it's not just limited to healing but we are going to pray for the sick now now we are going to do this very fast and um please those that will be ministering let's let's do it very fast it's not in how long listen let me tell you something about the anointing it's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency just a touch is enough for the anointing the same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sea god bless Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. Yeah the honor yes lord we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great yes there is no one else like you oh jesus there is no one else like you yes you are great and you do miracles so great oh there is no one else like you oh there is no one 
glory, say, you deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, and the honor. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and worship as we praise Worship tonight, so we lift our hands and worship as we pray. Your holy name is you. You're the There is no one, no one else that can touch me like you do. They can heal me. Say there is. Hey! Let's have 
All the name fade away. Counsel fade away. Arthritis fade away. Let every other name.
Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everyone. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every force. Nothing will stop your lifting. This is a season of lifting in the name of Jesus. Set! Pray, pray! Every song shall be broken. You will have the victor's crown. Say in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern in my life right now I declare you destroyed lift your voice and begin to pray challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Abo sabala kato pa shabren legedea. In the name of Jesus, say after me in the name of Jesus, every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight, I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace, every dimension of grace, Kabala Koshabala. Shut up, 
Every dimension. Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life upon my family and destroy every planting that is not of God lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray let your fire fall upon my life let your fire bring a separation lift your hands I'm about to pray for you now. We are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils. There are lives and destinies that are under the yokes of darkness. It's time for the devil to give up. Are we together? Are you ready to shout that name that is above all names? Let me tell you, I want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of God in your life. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus, everywhere. And as you shout that name, the sword of the Lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you. Are we together now? Especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time. I'm ministering deliverance now. Every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life, as you shout this name, May the visitation of that fire. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I command the fire, the fire of the spirit. Bring them up. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. Shukete ko satavali akatoch. Hallelujah. I think the ground is good enough. You can bring them. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying now. I'm still praying. Anyone's destiny that is under siege. Right now, I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing, I'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire open destinies now shake it katakata open destinies now open destinies now inside outside open destinies now open destinies now hallelujah i'm seeing a horn and i'm seeing fire burning it please be sensitive this is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families he said in zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18 what yes thou he said four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against jerusalem against judah so that no man does lift his head he said but i have sent four carpenters lift your hands i'm praying right now in the name of jesus the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside 
in the name of Jesus anyone here suppose Sekatos Kabariakata under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three that horn that symbol of authority that has tied your family that has tied your life it is uprooted one two three I release that fire now I release that fire now I release that fire now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now hallelujah the Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness but then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of jesus ah i tell you all i see is just fire that's what i'm saying every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now by the fire of the holy ghost i declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the holy ghost overflow one i'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of jesus i'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that satan has rendered barren i stand by the anointing of the holy ghost and i decree and declare be delivered right now deliver right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi who is Kemi Kemi um, I may not maybe I may just talk to one or two people Kemi you are wearing red it's like it's a guy called Kemi who is that you are wearing red what's your name uh -uh, i didn't i'm saying this is i'm saying i know that kemi is a lady's name it's not a guy i will pray for you it's your hunger this is you are wearing red what's your name your name is kemi yes sir you are wearing red i'll pray for you but gentlemen you are here there is a hunger that you carry listen you came from ah uh, i'm seeing cross river yeah? Cross River, Cross River, Cross River. You yes, sir. came. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, you came because of a hunger yes, sir. to truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. Yes, you heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the Word and direction. But you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing. A new dimension a new season my dear there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life in the name of jesus christ i stir up that spirit that dimension 
I open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of Jesus as I'm praying this I'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy where are they I stretch my hands right now 11 people 11 people scattered inside and outside in the name that is above all names receive that spirit you need it I stir it up from your spirit man I stir it up from your spirit man the grace for prophecy Makatos Kabarakata sons and daughters stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but I shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions you will never be the same I'm still praying this I'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of Jesus I shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic I move you by grace in the name of Jesus Christ I activate it I activate it that dimension I'm praying I don't know why God is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the Spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life for your destiny in the area of the fivefold, I declare, let the anointing of the Spirit locate you. As it locates you, the Lord begins to prepare you. Where are they? Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. hallelujah there is a dangerous spirit our time is up hold on but there is a spirit that i want to rebuke now i just saw written in the air rejection hold on many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you you stand you are watching and an opportunity come rejection is not just a state it's a spirit lift your hands don't pray don't do anything just lift your hands hallelujah that's the instruction the lord is giving me just lift your hands just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus many of you will be surprised now there are people it's like a yoke i'm seeing like cowries these cowries that they use that's what i'm seeing and in the name of jesus christ as the power of god is smashing that rubbish that's how many people who have been despised been despised the bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you it says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations right now i stretch my hands from the front to the back overflow one two three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost rejection i command that spirit to leave i'm still praying i command that spirit to leave i command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now 
in the name of Jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 I release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside I command your deliverance right now I command your deliverance right now I command your deliverance right now keep your hands lifted and pray mighty things are happening in the spirit I ask us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart patterns I'm still seeing it again there are some of you the same thing happens to every member of your family at certain seasons everything must happen either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct you must have a child before you get married or something someone will rape you someone raped your mother someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout jesus lord i pray that as your people shout that name every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter delay hallelujah my dear come this come this your first time here where are you coming from you're coming from abuja yes, i want to pray for you you had the prayer i just said we should pray yes. that prayer was was for you don't be embarrassed eh? there is a spirit of delay that must live your life you are a great lady but i see delay come it's a demonic spirit and if you are not delivered and you get up and go to abuja just like that it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God but I lay my hands upon your head and in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of delay I call you by name let this lady go now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit go now live her life forever in the name of Jesus that lady wearing lime cloth you this one come quickly please Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris Doris who is Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me look at me shout Jesus My dear look at me witchcraft i'm stretched the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands in front of you i stretch my hands and i declare i'm seeing an altar catching fire in the name of jesus christ i declare it by the spirit i stretch my hands that's what the lord is saying i should do i stretch my hands it catches fire now oh, 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 oh. 
Oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Doris, look at me. Where are you coming from? From Congo. From Congo. Hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Is taken from my life. Is taken from my life. Forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. Hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing... I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so, your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest. Who is that? Come. Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen by the Spirit of the living God. I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents. No, don't. I, if, if I pray, most of you, it's not, it's not that word. You are just coming just because you want. It may be related in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm just praying for you. As I'm touching you, you see, let me let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see this touch, you see. This touch, just this touch, you see. There is power in it. It's just that we are very carnal people. Do you understand? After service, you can hug me and jump on me. But now, what is on me is what makes this touch different. You see that? You can, you can have, it's not just a touch, maybe a touch for jamboree. No, 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 no. You can I can lay my hands on you, right? And then something can come upon you. I can lay my hands upon you, and then your life will change. Sometimes you see me just speak, and you think it as as I pray like this, you see, watch your life and see what it becomes. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? That's 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 the point. The word of God that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you. When it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs, it will stay there until there is a performance. This thing you see is not just power, it's authority. It's authority. There is authority in the spirit. It's not just, just sit down and we keep watching. I, be, just the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone, let me tell you, whether you are inside or outside, your life will never, never be the same. If I never get to touch you, speak to you like this, the word of God carries the anointing. Do you understand? It's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological. It is the power of God. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you